Hey, welcome, welcome to New Community Online. We're so grateful that you joined us this morning. We're just gonna lift up the name of Jesus in this place, and we want you to do the same wherever you are. So however you do that, just do it with us. Hallelujah to the Most High God. Come on, let's sing this together. Say 
bless the name of Jesus. You're worthy of the praise. Yeah. Let praises rise from the inside. God, we lift you up from the inside, our hearts and minds in tune with you. We want to love you more, God. We want to serve you more. We want to be closer to you, God. Let praises rise. Thank you, Jesus.
name of Jesus. Glorify the name of Jesus. Lift high the name of Jesus. Hey, there's no other name. There's no other name. Be lifted high. Oh, glorify the name of Jesus. Bless the matchless name of Jesus. Be glorified. Be lifted high. Be lifted high. Be lifted high. You said if you be lifted up, you'll draw men. Be lifted high. We lift you high. Be lifted high. Be lifted high. Be glorified in this place, Lord. In my life, Lord. In my home. Be lifted. Be lifted high. In this place, Lord. In my life, Lord. Be glorified. Yeah. Be glorified, last time. Be lifted high. God, we bless you. God, we worship you. God, we lift you high. We lift your name. We praise you. Be magnified, God. Be glorified. We exalt you. We extol you. We bless you. Marvelous are your ways, God. Marvelous are your ways, God. You're a magnificent God, an awesome God. There's no one like you. God, we give you praise. We give you honor, we give you glory. We bless the name of Jesus. Thank you for joining with the praise team and making that praise time what it can be when you add your voice to it. Can we add our voices now and say our statement of dedication together? We say this every time we meet because we want to be reminded of why we meet and why we do what we do. Here we go. We are the people of God. We are committed to learning how to follow Jesus in every area of our lives. The Holy Bible, the Word of God, is essential if we are to be strong, stay strong, and do great exploits for Christ. We are committed to one another, to fellowship together, to love one another, to worship together, to serve one another and to serve our church. We pray for one another and we come together to pray. For we know that when the people of God cry out to God, God has promised to do miracles in our lives, our homes, and our cities. Therefore, once again on this day, we dedicate ourselves to live for Christ. And when we leave our homes today, we go out with a renewed commitment to tell all people in every place every walk of life about the good news and hope found only in Jesus Christ our Lord. Now is a good time to focus on giving. Thank you so much everyone who has been so consistent this year in your giving. We are able to do so much here because of your consistent giving. Remember there are four ways to give. You can either give through our website newcommunitybible.org or you can give through our app, which you can download on your phone. You can text to give, or you can send a paper check to New Community, the actual building. While you're focusing on that and maybe even doing it right now, let me tell you about an opportunity that's going to be coming up in less than a month. November 8th, November 8th, if you are a parent, you need to mark November 8th, 4 o'clock. That's a Sunday a bye week for the Browns, so you don't have to worry about that. Someone said this week that people are pandemic out. Um, we've been in this so long that it's easy to just get frustrated, just say, I'm tired of this, but it's still here and it's still a threat. If you're a parent, you know that you're um, really been pushed to the limit. Some schools had said that they were going to have in-person learning and then they decided not to because the numbers have been getting higher, the COVID numbers. We have a session November 8th at 4 o'clock p.m. You can, um, it's a webinar that you want to join if you are a parent. We hope to encourage you, to build you up spiritually, to get you ready in case this extends into next year. Uh, we want to uh, encourage you to wear the mask. So it's called Parent Conversations, Put a Mask On. Parent Conversations, Put a Mask On. November 8th, you want to go to newcommunitybible.org and look for Parent Conversations, Put a Mask On. 
Remember that you can give four ways. You can either give through our website or you can give uh, through our text messaging or you can give through the app on your phone or you can send a check to newcommunitybible.org. Thanks. If the altar's where you meet us, take me there, take me there. What you need is just an offering. It's right here, my life is here, and I'll be a living sacrifice for you. You're the fire, the refiner. Take whatever you desire. Lord, here's my life. I want to be tried by fire. Purify. You take whatever you desire. Oh, Lord, here's my life. If your glory wants to come. We want it all. Your fire is consuming. Fill this place, set it ablaze, and I'll be a living sacrifice for you. You're the fire, the refiner.
Take my life as a living sacrifice. What a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful song unto the Lord. Well, I'm Elder Charles Domingue, and I am honored and excited today to be a part of our Pastor Appreciation Celebration Sunday. And we are blessed to have an incredible leader in Pastor Kevin James. I can personally attest to the impact that he's had on my life my family's life, and the lives of so many of our members and people in our community. Pastor, I know that one of the things that excites you the most is hearing stories of life change from our members. And we want to encourage you today. I want to share two stories with you from two of our members. One member shared, when COVID-19 started, it caused, and caused us to enter into quarantine I was concerned about the possibility of separation from the people of God and the elimination of fellowship at New Community. But our church responded quickly and effectively with continuing our fellowship, praise and worship, small groups, preaching, and praying through virtual platforms. I have experienced a real sense of connectedness to the people of God and to God. I may miss the in-person fellowship, but I do not have a feeling of isolation. I feel connected, a deep sense of joy and peace. I praise God for your leadership, Pastor Kevin. And Pastor, I know that many of us share this same sentiment. Another member shared, when I first came to New Community, I had no relationship with God. I just had religion and routine. I may have memorized the word, but I came to realize at New Community that knowing Christ means life change, not routine. New Community is about growing in your relationship with God and being authentic. That was hard for me, but God changed my life, starting with my small group. I experienced a true love like never before, and it's still real. My life has been changed through the power of Jesus Christ. I have a family, a new community who truly loves me, gives me spiritual advice, walks with me through difficult times, and prays for me. What an incredible story. You too will have an opportunity today to share your story personally with Pastor Kevin. At 1 p.m. today, we are hosting a virtual reception where you'll be able to go into a Zoom platform and personally share your story and give Pastor Kevin some words of encouragement. Simply go to www.newcommunitybible.org slash pastor hyphen appreciation and you'll get further instructions on how to do that. Changing lives through the power of Jesus Christ has been the foundation of New Community Bible Fellowship 
for the last 25 years. And not only has lives been changed in our membership, in our community, but all over the world through ministry partners that we support. Saints of New Community Bible Fellowship, I am here. This is Grandpa, and I've got words of encouragement for my spiritual son, Pastor Kevin, on this very special pastor appreciation. Uh, Kevin, you are a man of the word. You live by the word. You preach the word in season and out of season, and you do not compromise the word of God. You are truly a man of the word. You are a man of family. Mm. How you have been a husband to First Lady Tanya uh, and your two lovely daughters. You're a man of family. You love your family. You cherish your family. And it's a model that we all love to see. And I'm impressed by it to no end. Kevin, lastly, I'll say this to you. I'm glad you're learning how to be a grandpa just like me. <laughs> God bless you and enjoy your special yes, appreciation. Laura and I were so grateful oh to find new community when we lived uh, in Cleveland Heights. We were so privileged to sit under your leadership um, year after year. We were so honored to be uh, welcomed in as members of new community. And I continue to this day to be so humbled that the church continues to support my ministry with InterVarsity, working to reach college students of every ethnicity and diversity and to train staff to do the same. Um, thank you um, for your leadership of New Community and, and for being a part of my ministry. Pastor Kevin James, oh, this is Pastor Max of Life Point Church. And I wanted to take a moment to celebrate and honor you for Pastor Appreciation Month. Thank you so much for you being the man of God that you are, for having touched my life the way you have. And you are forever an example to me of what it means to be a man of God who walks in integrity and trusts in the Lord with all his heart. This is Joni and Will Fierstein from Panama. <laughs> Pastor Kevin, we have been pulling the gospel wagon with you for over 20 years. And look, we're still looking young. Yeah. All of us. Thank you so much, Pastor Kevin, New Community Bible Fellowship, our brothers and sisters in Christ. Have a wonderful day. Oh, Bye. Bye. You. We love you. Love you too. Pastor Kevin, oh, Sister Barbie God. and I want to extend our blessings and encouragement to you on this 2020 Pastors Appreciation Sunday. We thank God and bless him for the way his hand has been on you through the decades, seeing the ministry of New Community Bible Fellowship grow. And Barbie and I are honored to be missionaries of New Community Bible Fellowship. We're just grateful for you. I'm glad we met way back when we were getting scholarships to go to school. And you said that you wanted to support someone from Indonesia because you had wanted to go yourself. And you kept your word. We've been refreshed and blessed all along the way. Congratulations on your years of ministry that have been a blessing to all of us. Hi, my name is Rich Berry. I am living in Atlanta and my claim to fame is that when Kevin and Tan were here in Atlanta, I was their pastor. What a privilege I had. I watched Kevin get a call from God, go off to seminary, and then go to Cleveland and start with a few people and look what God has done. And I pray that God would continue, that he would make himself big in each of our lives, especially those who are there in Cleveland. God bless you, Kevin and Tan. Wow, 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 Thank man. You. That wow. was awesome. Lord, you've been so good to me. Lord, you've been so good to me. I can't praise you enough. I can't praise you enough. Lord, you've been good to me. You're so good. You've been good to me. Yeah. You've been so, so good. You've been good to me. So good. 
Lord, you are good. You've been so good. Lord, you are good. You've been better than good. I can't praise you enough. I owe you my life. Can't praise you enough. Even if I tried, cause you've been so good. You bet. 
the name of Jesus. When I think about the goodness of Jesus, when I think about all he's done, my soul cries hallelujah. I remember as I look back at times where I thought it couldn't get any worse, where I didn't know how I was going to make it and I thought I would give up and I can look back now and see God you made a way. When I didn't see that there was a way God you brought me through that impassable, impossible time God you made a way, you opened a door. God, you've been so good. Somebody give God praise right where you are. Give God a praise right where you are. If he's made a way for you, if he's brought you through, if he has kept you when you thought you couldn't be kept, give God a praise right now. Oh, hallelujah. God, you've been so good. You've been good. Oh, indescribable, uncontainable. You place the stars in the sky and you know all them by name.
Give God a hand clap of praise right where you are. Come on, give God a praise because he's an amazing God. He's an amazing God. He's an awesome God. Hey, new community, Crawford Loritz here. Say, I sure wish that I could be there in person to celebrate with you, to, to see your faces, to interact with you, and to get caught up. I, I, I love new community, and I love your dear pastor, Kevin James. He is a dear brother to me, and I'm grateful to God for how he's using uh, Kevin and his dear bride, Tanya, and, and all of those who link arms with him to help translate his vision for new community to reality. What, what, a wonderful, what a wonderful thing. And also, I, I, in, in interacting with Pastor Kevin, I, I understand that uh, this entire month you've been celebrating leadership and valuing those who lead. And what a wonderful thing to do. In fact, the Bible teaches us that we should give honor to whom honor is due. And, and I want to thank you for doing that. What a model. You know, sometimes we complain about what leaders should be doing and what they haven't done and what they need to be and all of this. And and some of that is helpful. Constructive criticism helps us to be, where we, be what we need to be. But it's good to sit back and just thank God for raising up the leaders that he's given to us. I want to approach this in a little bit different way today than what we normally talk about. Uh, I want to talk about the challenges of the, that leaders go through, uh, particularly the attacks that take place for us to appreciate what's underneath the hood. You see, one of the things that we don't talk about too much is that uh, it is necessary. This is, this, this, this is not very um, warm and fuzzy, but it is necessary for all of us to go through adversity in order for us to be what God has called us to be. In other words, there, there is no cheap pathway to leadership. There's no shortcut way to leadership. Um, in the kingdom of God and from God's perspective, the reason why he uses people to, sh to serve those in the body of Christ and to lead others is because they desire, hear me, to be the portrait of a desired destination. They're being grown and developed by the challenges that they face. And God allows these challenges to indeed grow us and develop us. And I want to go back to the book of Daniel. Daniel was an extraordinary leader, an amazing leader that God used. But Daniel was not exempt from the stress, struggle, and strain and from the challenges of leadership and from adversity. In fact, you see out through the course of his life, including his three, three dear friends, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, or we know them as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that they went through some tough times. It begins when they were barely teenagers in chapter 1. They were challenged with regard to their identity, and the king tried to change structurally who they were and try to change their diets, and try to get them to violate what they knew that they should not violate, and that is the law, uh, dietary laws. But then there's that one verse that marked the course of their lives, verse 8. But Daniel resolved, and probably speaking for his three friends, but Daniel resolved in his heart and life that he would not defile himself. Then over in chapter 3, they were challenged with regard to idolatry, uh, the king making probably an image of, his, of himself, and and these three, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, would not bow down and worship. What an amazing thing. And then two, the other two challenges, both of which has to do with Daniel's integrity, over in chapter 5, when Belshazzar begins to mock God and has this drunken orgy, and he sends for the vessels that had been taken from the temple in Jerusalem when, when uh, uh, Nebuchadnezzar had besieged it and brought back to the Babylonian Empire, and he began to mock God, and a hand began to write on the wall. And Daniel shows up. The text says that there was a man. The queen mother says that there is a man named Daniel. Daniel wasn't a part of the party, wasn't a part of the kingdom, but he had a word from God. He could have caved. Now we go over to chapter 6, and this is where I want to park it today. In chapter 6, there's another challenge to his integrity, or you might want to call it isolation. At this point, there's a new king. The Persian government has taken over, and Daniel is back in, involved with the government. And he has so distinguished himself that he is one of the leaders of the government. Now, we know this story is a famous story of Daniel and the lions, and we tell the story. But it's, uh, what's behind the scenes here is really remarkable. 
It really is a picture of a leader who continues to pay the price, who continues to operate from character and convictions, who continues to operate not from platform and not from recognition, not for strokes, not for the kind words, but he does right no matter what. What a blessing this passage is. It's a great, great story. And once again, I want to just underscore to all of us that there will be seasons in our lives in which we will have to stand alone and pay a dear price for our convictions. And that's really what leadership is about. It's not the top box on the organizational chart all the time. Uh, it's, not, it's, not, it's not being seen, but it's the willing to pay whatever price necessary to do what God has called us to do. And we need to value that and appreciate that in our leaders. This story is, uh, really un unfolds along these five scenes, I would call it, five scenes. And let me give them to you, and then we'll just put some meat on the skeleton. Scene number one, I call good trouble. Then secondly, there's bad people. And then thirdly, there's immovable commitment. And then fourthly, there's this irresistible, compelling influence. And then finally, there's God's vindication. Well, it starts off with Daniel being at the top of the heap here. Here you have this Jew in this Persian empire, but he's going to get himself into good trouble. We pick it up in verse 1. It says, It pleased Darius to set over the kingdom 120 satraps to be throughout the whole kingdom, and over them three high officials, of whom Daniel was one, to whom these satraps should give an account, so that the king might suffer no loss. Then this Daniel became distinguished above all the other high officials and satraps, because an excellent spirit was in him, and the king planned to set him over the whole kingdom. Then the high officials and the satraps sought to find a ground for a complaint against Daniel with regard to the kingdom, but they could find no ground for complaint or any fault. Uh, listen to that again. They could not find no ground for complaint or any fault because he was faithful and no error or fault was found in him. Then these men said, we shall not find any ground for complaint against this Daniel unless we find it in connection with the law of his God. Well, here you have it. Now, I got to say something about satraps. The satraps were, were kind of like uh, 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 if you live in a state that has counties, they were sort of like county commissioners, I would put it that way. And there were 120 different regions throughout the Persian Empire. The Persian Empire was massive. And so you had a satrap, a protector or commissioner, if you will, over each one of these regions. And over these 120 satraps were three officials, three executives, so to speak, three leaders, and Daniel was one of them. But Daniel, as we, you know, chronologically, is probably an old man in, in, in chapter 6, but this, this guy was amazing. Not only was he in a, 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 one of the, the, the great leaders in terms of being chosen by these three, but he began to distinguish himself because the text says there was an excellent spirit in him. Now, the problem here in chapter 6 is an issue of jealousy. <laughs> These uh, organizational politics. Um, Daniel was causing trouble. And you should not miss this. This shouldn't go over your head. Yes, Daniel was a Jew in a Gentile empire. And yet this Jew who had been one of the captives that Nebuchadnezzar brought back when he besieged Babylon is over these other Gentiles. Now, that didn't set well. And so what did they try to do? Well, they tried to undo Daniel. They, uh, they, they went about, they checked him out, they looked at him, they looked at what he did, how he did what he did. Did he do the report right? Did he check off the box? Was, is there any laziness there? Did he mail things in? Is he showing up on time? Is he leaving too early? Is he taking too long of a lunch period? What? They tried to find, they tried to find something wrong with Daniel. Something wrong with him. And they couldn't find anything wrong with him. He did his job. By the way, let me just say this as an aside. As a believer, as a follower of Jesus Christ, each one of us should be the best employee on our jobs. Our testimony, how we do our work, should speak for the character that we maintain. And that's exactly what happened to Daniel here. 
Now, notice the line there. They said he, he's going to get in some good trouble here. We're not going to find any fault with Daniel. And believe me, I don't think there was a rock that they did not turn over. There was not a trash can that they did not look through. They said, we're not going to find any problem with Daniel except with regard to his God. Daniel was not hesitant. He was not shy. He was not indirect. He did not hide the fact that he worshiped Yahweh, Jehovah God. And he was loyal to him. And so, in so many words, to, to sort of borrow the phrase that uh, the late John Lewis made popular, Daniel said, if I'm going to get in trouble, it's going to be good trouble. Good trouble. So now the stage is set. What are we going to do with this Daniel? We can't just let him continue to go unbridled. How are we going to handle him? What are we going to do about him? Enter number two, the second scene. So you got good people. Number two, I mean, you got good trouble. Number two, you have bad, bad people, bad people. Well, this is interesting because now they decide, well, the only way we're going to leverage him, leverage our, our, our desires and take care of him and perhaps get rid of him is that we got to come up with some type of plan. So they launched this plot in verses six through nine. They knew that Daniel worshipped the God of Israel. And so they planned to ensnare him by uh, forcing him to worship other gods. Now, they knew he wouldn't budge on this. They knew him well enough that Daniel was not going to budge on this. And so because his convictions were not hidden, any of that, they orchestrate this masterful, masterful plan. Now, the deal is this. They had to get the king to sign this document. Somehow or another, they had to dupe him. And so we pick it up here in chapter 6, verse, uh, verse 6. It says, Then these high officials and satraps came by agreement to the king and said to the king, O king Darius, live forever. All the high officials of the kingdom, the prefects and the satraps, the counselors and the governors are agreed that the king should establish an ordinance and enforce an injunction. Now listen to this line, that whoever makes petition to any god or man for 30 days except you, except you, O king, shall be cast into the den of lions. You see how they hotwired him? <laughs> you see what they did? Darius' ego caused him to be blind to what they were trying to do. They said for 30 days, you, we love you so much, King. We, we, we think you're the greatest. We think you're the greatest leader. Oh, stroke, stroke, stroke. And you, you, you're just so wonderful. You've done so many great things. Nobody's like you. In fact, we just want to make it a law that nobody prays to any other God except you for 30, for 30 days. For 30 days. And the punishment would be to throw them in this den of lions. Now, verses 8 and 9. Now, O king, establish the injunction and sign the document so that it cannot be changed according to the law of the Medes and the Persians, which cannot be revoked. Therefore, King Darius signed the document and injunction. Before he could see through their scheme, Darius signed it. Trapped. According to the law of the Medes and the Persians, that once, an, uh, once a law had been signed, it could not be revoked. It couldn't be changed. It was airtight. It was airtight. So Darius signed it. You see, his ego caused him to be manipulated. What a contrast. Here you have Daniel, humble, committed, worshiping God, understanding that the position that he has has been given to him by God, leading with his loyalty to God. And Darius, full of himself, ego blinded him, and he got set up. It's the oldest trick in the book, isn't it? Pump somebody's ego, stroke, 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 flatter them, tell them what they want to hear while behind the scenes, while they're distracted and obsessed with themselves and singing how great thou art in the mirror, you've got them. You've got them. 
So he signs this document. He is trapped. He is trapped. Now, you got, you got good trouble, bad people, but thirdly, you've got immovable commitment. This is extraordinary to me. Verses 10 through 13. This is remarkable. What does Daniel do? Now, I want you to listen to the language of verse 10. Listen to the language. It says, but when Daniel knew. Not, not speculated or thought, perhaps this could be the case. But when Daniel knew that the document had been signed, he went to his house where he had windows in his upper chamber open toward Jerusalem he got down on his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before God, notice the line, as he had done previously. In other words, no matter what is going to happen to me, my loyalty to God is never going to change. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? Did you hear that? Did you hear that? No matter what is going to happen to me, my loyalty to God is not going to change. It's not going to change. You see, leaders, leaders are, should never be enamored by visibility, should never be enamored by a platform, should not be intoxicated with power. Daniel models before us that he understands that nobody gave him the platform except God. God placed him there. And he understood that it was because he, 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 he honored God and he glorified God and he exalted him that God poured out his favor on him. Oh, I would to God that as leaders we would capture this. And we need to pray. You need to pray for your leaders and uh, pray for me too, that all of us with any degree of influence over people's lives, that we, we will understand that God gave us that to glorify him. And the only reason why we got there is because we put him first. Daniel knew that the document had been signed. Now, I just got to be honest with you. If uh, maybe if I was if I was Daniel, I said I may may have hopefully still gone back to my room to pray like I did before. But I may have said, you know, I, I don't need to be opening no windows and I don't need to be quite as ostentatious and conspicuous about this thing here. Uh, God knows my heart, and I need to use some wisdom here. I don't need to be wearing this on my sleeve. People don't need to know about my, my obvious commitment. <laughs> no, no, no. He didn't compromise his convictions even in the face of punishment or death. He was going to do right because it was right. You see, the point is, and I don't know where, I remember where I read this, but one old sage said this, it is not a question of, of a sin he would not commit, but of a positive duty he would not omit. I'm not going to do it. God has brought me this far. And this is my source. Actually, although the text doesn't say this, I think it's strongly implied that Daniel realized the source of his effectiveness as a leader. The source of his effectiveness was the fact that he tapped into the heart of God through believing prayer. He tapped into the heart of God in believing prayer. And I want to encourage all of us to continue to pray for our leaders that we would be prayer warriors that we would be like Daniel, that we would lead with prayer and communion with our great God. Now, this, this, is, this is exactly what uh, these bad folks are waiting for. Um, they were outside Daniel's house because they knew of his routine. They knew of his habit. And so verse 11 says, Then these men came by agreement and found Daniel making petition and plea before his God. Then they came near and said before the king concerning the injunction, O king, did you not sign an injunction that anyone who makes petition to any god or man within 30 days except you, O king, shall be cast into the den of lions? 
You can imagine the king thinking, yeah, well, you know, I know what I said. I know what I said. In fact, uh, the king says the thing stands fast according to the law of the Medes and the Persians, which cannot be revoked. They're waiting for him to see, say that. Him to men. Then they answered and said before the king, Daniel, who is one of the exiles from Judah, pays no attention to you. You see how they make it personal. Now they make it personal. No, they, they don't. They, they didn't say they disregard the law. He disregards the laws of the Medes and the Persians. No, he says, no, he disregards you, O king, or the injunction you have signed, but makes his petition three times a day. Wow. You, you can't help. You can't help but feel the shadows of racism here. The expression, one of the exiles, one of the exiles, that is pregnant with implications. Yeah. OK. You see, you bought these people here and now you try to make them take over. You see what they do? You see what they do? So what is the king going to do? Man. So, good trouble, bad people, immovable commitment. But Daniel had had a powerful impact on Darius, powerful impact on him. So we see this portrait of just compelling influence. Uh, listen to these words after they do this whole gotcha thing with him. In verse 14, verse 14, they stand before uh, uh, Darius is by himself now. And then the king, when he heard these words, was much distressed and set his mind to deliver Daniel and labored till the sun went down to rescue him. Why the intentionality here? Why, why is he so passionate about rescuing Daniel? Well, I'll tell you why, because Daniel had a huge, huge impact on this man. Huge impact on him. He, 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 couldn't, he couldn't sleep. He, 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 he wanted to see him delivered. He labored till the sun went down to rescue him. Now, by the way, by the way, that, that, whole, that whole statement, sun went down to rescue him, uh, my research indicates that it implies two things. Number one, obviously, he did everything that he could to reverse or change the law. But secondly, secondly, the sentence had to be carried out the same day as the crime. So he was he was under pressure. I can imagine him thinking, what in the world have I done here? What have I done? He loved Daniel. In fact, Daniel had distinguished himself. He had seen in him, this, this dude, he's not playing politics like the rest. He's refreshingly different, refreshingly noble. I, I don't understand all that uh, he knows about this Yahweh, this Jehovah God. But he's loyal to him and it makes him better than the rest. There's something about him that captured his heart. A little aside here. Our communion and faithfulness before God is the pathway to loyalty by those who watch us. So what's happening here? Well, the king is just really torn, torn up. He's absolutely torn up. Well, verse 18 just tells us that he, he just really couldn't sleep. Verse 18 says that then the king went to his palace and spent the night fasting. No diversions were brought to him. And he slept, his, sle his sleep, excuse me, fled from him. Here he is. He's fasting. Now, I, I have to say, although it doesn't come right out and say that, I think that here you have this pagan king probably praying to the God of Daniel. 
turning down his food, seeking God to intervene on this friend of his behalf. Apparently, Daniel had had a huge, again, impact on this man. Now, verse 19 says that Darius has held, held out hope that God would deliver Daniel. Uh, just just notice, notice, the, notice the language here. Verse 19 says, Then at break of day, the king arose and went in haste to the den of lions. Why, why did he go in haste to the den of lions? If these lions were, were, were hungry, uh, he should have just concluded that, yeah, Daniel, it's 100% sure, is devoured by now. Why did he get up early at the break of day and go to the den of lions? Once again, because there was something different about him. Something different about this Daniel. Could it be? And he maybe have heard stories. Stories of how he came in to Belshazzar, this previous leader, and read the handwriting on the wall. Or maybe he had heard the stories of Daniel's three friends, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, and the fiery furnace that was legendary. Maybe he had been briefed on the decision that Daniel made as a young teenager that he would not defile himself. And maybe what the Spirit of God was doing in his heart and mind was saying, there, there, there may be hope. And obviously we come now to the final scene. It's good people, uh, good trouble, bad people, right? Immovable commitment. Wow. Compelling influence. But finally, there's God's vindication. Is God's vindication. What happens? This man comes to the den of the lions. He rushes there and he peers into the den. Uh, verse 20 says, as he came near to the den where Daniel was, he cried out to a, in a tone of anguish. Uh, the, you you got to understand, he is rushing. The king is rushing to get there. And he, he's not there yet before he starts crying out to Daniel. He cried out in a tone of anguish. The king declared to Daniel, O oh, Daniel, servant of the living God. This man may have gotten converted the night before. Servant of the living God has your God, whom you serve continually, been able to deliver you from the lions. And I have this scene in my mind that Daniel is chilling. He's laid back, head on one of these lions, petting one over here. And he looks up and he says to the king, oh, king, live forever. By the way, my God sent his angel and shut the lion's mouth. And they have not harmed me because I was found blameless before him and also before you, O king. I have done them no harm. The reason I believe that leaders feel lonely sometimes and are isolated and God allows adversity to come along and there are those seasons in which people are not there to help, no fault of their own maybe, is simply because God wants to prove that he's enough that he is sufficient. And the reason why I share this with you as we have this Pastor's Appreciation Month and you're celebrating your leaders this month is that I want you to see, take a look underneath the hood. It's not all about visibility. It's not all about progression. But there's a dear price that has to be paid that you can't run from. But the price that you have to pay that you don't run from, that is often painful and often lonely, is the very thing God uses to not only change you, but to impact those around you. So as you look at people who are serving, and you look at people who are, who are doing great things for God, and you look at people who are sacrificing their time to translate vision to reality, right there at New Community, you look at them. 
Don't just thank them for what they've accomplished. Don't, don't just thank them for how there's a job well done. But you know what? Yeah, thank them for that, but thank them for being faithful to God. Thank them for not running away from the hard stuff. Thank them for showing up in the midst of adversity and pain and tests and trials and struggle. Because in so doing, the sufficiency of God is being seen through them. Hey, bless you, and I trust that God will continue to use your new community and that uh, leaders will continue to be raised up there and that there'll just be a wonderful sense of oneness as we celebrate our great God together. We value the people that he's given to us. And yes, we realize that at times there's going to be hard things that we all go through. God bless you. Let's pray, pray together. Holy Father, thank you again for your word. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for what you've done. And Lord Jesus, I do pray for each one of us. May there be a spirit of Daniel when it's our turn, not only to serve, but sometimes to suffer, that we will stay faithful to you no matter what, and that we will prove you and allow your glory, your power, your deliverance to be demonstrated in and through the hard stuff that we may at times have to go through. Thank you, Jesus, for yourself. In Jesus' name, amen. Part of our statement of dedication is that we pray for one another and we come together to pray. And this is that time. If you need prayer for any reason, maybe you've accepted Christ as Savior, maybe you'd like to know more about that, maybe you have an illness that is either in your body or in the body of somebody that you love and you'd like to pray about it. Maybe you have a financial issue, maybe the pressure of the pandemic is just getting to be too much. If you have any of those concerns, if you are listening to this on a Sunday between um, 10.30 or 10 o'clock and 2, 2 p.m., you can call in and get a, a person to talk to you in real time to pray with you. If you have any concern, you can text call me, C-A-L-L-M-E, to the number that's on the bottom of your screen now. Text that to that number and you will get a phone call back. And then when you answer it, you're going to be connected to somebody on the prayer team. You can do that now. Two more things. On November 11th at 11 a.m., November 11th at 11 a.m., we're going to be starting a, uh, a series of talks. It's called uh, Women Real Table Talk. This one is called What I Wish Someone Had Told Me. It's going to have our own Tanya James, uh, the First Lady, and it's also going to have Marie Walker, who you know uh, can, uh, can speak into the lives of women. They're also going to have a special guest, uh, Jordan Dunlap. That's gonna be November 8th at 11 a.m., so mark your calendars for that now. And finally, if you're listening to this on Sunday morning, you can join a Zoom where we will celebrate Pastor Kevin in real time. That's gonna be at one o'clock later today if you're watching this on Sunday morning. Uh, you can go to newcommunitybible.org for more details on how to get that Zoom link and how to tell the pastor how much he and this ministry has meant to you this year. Thank you. Say, Lord, you're mine. 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 Oh, Lord, you're mine. Lord, you're mighty. 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 Say, Lord, you're mighty. 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 Oh, Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. Come on and sing with me. Come on, sing. You set your glory above the heavens and the earth. When I 
I think, I 